think to yourself, well, what do I eat? How often do I eat it? What are my eating habits? To be physically fit, you have to cut off junk foods, right? You have to cut off binge eating. Just, I'm okay. I, I'm controlling my diet and all of a sudden, I'm going to have four Big Macs. It just, just doesn't work that way. You can't just control your diet and one day say, okay, I'm going to have three bags of Oreo cookies. Not only do you have to control junk food, you have to cut them off. You have to cut off binge eating and you have to cut off late night snacks. You can't have ramen at two in the morning, James, and go to sleep, right? It just can't work that way. Second thing is resting. If you don't give your body time to recuperate an opportunity to rest, you cannot be physically fit. Now, most of you know, if you don't get your rest next day, you can't even concentrate on your schoolwork and stuff. Sleeping at night is important, but it's also important to take some time off during the day just to relax and recuperate your mind and your body. How many of you take naps? Okay. How many of you, how many of you take some time off in the day just to relax to yourself? All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Those times are very, very important. Number third is exercising. Are you exercising right now? What do you do? I exercising breathing. <laughs> I take a walk every day. How many of you do lifts, weights? Any guys weightlifting? No? Any girls? Yoga? What, do, what, what is that thing called? Platus? Plat, platius? Plati? Okay. <laughs> so how often do you exercise? Can you say you're exercising if you exercise one day a week? Is that considered exercise? Not if you ask the doctors, right? In exercising, there's a phrase, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Why do people say no pain, no gain? You know, do you know how the muscle develops? I'm sure you guys all know. The muscle develops and bulks up to the process of muscle fibers being tore apart and then the muscle repairing itself. It's a process of tearing and repairing, tearing and repairing that makes the muscle big. That's why I don't have much muscles because I don't tear my muscles that much. If you see those big guys in the gym, it's because they're pushing their limits. They're pushing it so hard that they're tearing their muscles and then they give time to, to what? For the muscles to repair itself and then what do they do again tear it again and then they go through this process of tearing and repairing until the muscles get bulky you know the trainer will will assess your current condition and discuss the desired outcome if Hammond wants to be in the Olympics the trainer will talk to her and say what's your desired outcome and then the trainer will and put together a training program so we could reach that outcome right likewise training in spiritual fitness requires the same thing that requires physical fitness that's what Paul, the, Paul is saying in first Timothy 4 we must train ourselves in godliness so let's think about this eating just as an assessment of what we are feeding our body is needed we need to take an inventory of what we are feeding our soul what we are feeding our spirit we need to assi assess how much junk food we let through our eyes how much junk food we are feeding our mind and our hearts how many of you eat junk food spiritually? Most of us actually do. 
Do you guys ever binge on spiritually not good junk foods? Hours and hours at a time? Do you have late night snacks of junk food spiritually? Well, when you get up in the morning, it's going to show. As if When you eat lamin and you go to sleep, your face gets all bloated. When you do light, late night binging on spiritual junk food and you get up, your spirit's going to be, spiritually, you're going to feel bloated. It's, it's not going to be feeling healthy. We need to ask ourselves, what do we desire? What is the outcome that we desire of how spiritually fit you want to be? How much do you want to be like Christ? Controlling what you eat spiritually is like controlling what you eat physically. It involves disciplining yourself to cut off unhealthy diet. Understand? Now, discipline means, well, so we need to do this. We need to discipline ourselves. So, discipline comes from the word decide, which means to cut away. Disciplining yourself means to make decisions to cut away the things that are keeping us from being like Christ, being godly. We have to make decisions to cut them away. So be aware, be deliberate about what you feed your soul. Pay attention to what you watch. Pay attention to what you hear. Pay attention to what you think. Train yourself. Discipline, discipline yourself. Make decisions to cut away those things that do not get you to become more and more Christ-like. Remember last week's message when I talked about cutting off and gouging out? Gouging out? Do you remember that part? It's better to limp with God than to run with sinners, right? It's better to limp into heaven than run into hell, right? Number two is resting. You know, this world is very, very good at preoccupying your mind. It's everywhere. The moment you turn on your computer to do any work, it's everywhere. It's everywhere to overload your mind. The world wants to keep you preoccupied with worries and anxieties, with greed and pride, with lust and temptation. It does, and it succeeds because it's continuously just bombarding you every awaking moment of your life. It's going to bombard you and overwhelm you with useless visual information. It's going to demand your attention through media. It wants to expand all of your time and energy in the things of the world. And it's going to try to make you as tired as possible. When you're tired and you... How many of you in a tired state try to read the Bible? We tried. Every one of us tried before. It doesn't work that well, does it? You just feel spiritually drained. You're like reading this thing and I'm saying, okay, I'm just going to the exercise, but I'm just tired. I can't get, I can't wait till I get to the end of this chapter so I can close this book. That's the world is trying to do. It wants to give you no rest. You know, on TV sometimes you see these guys playing computer games for like 48 hours or something. And you see them, they look like a zombie. They're like... He said, that's stupid. But if you look at your life, sometimes we do that to our lives too. We give ourselves no time to rest from the things of this world, from our spiritual junk foods. You need to actively choose to rest in God. Understand? You need to make that choice. You need daily Sabbath. This weekly Sabbath, one day a week, it's not even one day a week. It's how many minutes out of that one day. But we need daily Sabbath. We need time to just relax in the presence of God. Most of us are Sabbath deprived. Most of us are rest deprived. 
we are tired all the time. I need all of you to try to take 30 minutes of your time between noon and 6 p.m., okay? 30 minutes of your time between noon and 6 p.m. for you to rest in God, to rest with God. Now, two youth hangouts ago, my recommendation to our youth was this. Before you do any exercise in homework or anything like that, try to take an opportunity to open the Word of God before you do any studying and just read a chapter and spend some time with God. It's going to get you to relax with God. It's going to open up your spiritual sense and it's going to give you a peace of mind. So actually it's going to help you to be more effective in studying. Noon to 6 p.m., I want you to try to take one chapter of rest with God. Thirdly, exercising. Most of us don't strain ourselves when we exercise spiritually, do we? How many of you, when you're exercising spiritually, strain yourselves? You know, we try to fit in our reading here and there. We exercise our faith. We do good things. We serve God. We give. We love. But we all do all of these within our comfort zone. Not a lot of us, including me. It's hard to strain yourself spiritually. We'll do something when we can do something as much as we can do it comfortably. But I'm not going to strain myself. Well, no pain, no gain. We don't strain our spiritual muscles enough to the point where it hurts, where it rips our spiritual fiber. If you want to become spiritually strong, we need to push ourselves beyond our comfort level. Oh, I'm done with this one chapter. Okay, I'm done. Whew, that was too much for me. It's like, oh, I did three sit-ups. Oh, that's just extremely too much. If you want to be spiritually strong, we need to push ourselves beyond our spiritually comfort level. We need to remember no pain, no gain doesn't apply only to the things of this world, but spiritually, we need to push ourselves. Secondly, what are the things that a godly person is to avoid? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 7 says this. If anyone teaches false doctrine and does not agree with the sound teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the teachings that promote godliness, he is deceited and understands nothing, but has an unhealthy interest in disputes and arguments over words, from these come envy, crawling, slander, evil suspicions, and constant disagreement among people whose minds are depraved and deprived of the truth. We are to avoid unhealthy interest in disputes, arguments over words that cause envy, crawling, slander, and evil suspicion and disagreement. This is such a big problem in this world. We love to argue about things. If somebody disagrees with us, we'll go to war in this world. Do you know why? These are usually the result of our pride and self-righteousness, self-centeredness. These are the result of my will, not God's will. My image, not God's image. My likeness, not Christ's likeness. I'm not saying avoid oh, disagree disagreements at all costs. That's not what I'm saying. We shouldn't agree with someone who blatantly disagrees with, with God or is dis blatantly unbiblical.